Hello and welcome. I'm Nadia Singh. Dominion Energy Strategic Underground Program is designed to increase the overall reliability of our customers' electric service. This podcast is designed for our colleagues and the public to showcase the benefits to our customers and communities as we highlight those who innovate the program continuously and keep it running smoothly. During this series, we'll hear from Dominion Energy subject matter experts who will share their expertise and experiences. Joining me today is Karen Kinslow, formerly Dominion's Director of Grid Resiliency and Underground, and Alan Bradshaw, one of the creators of the Strategic Underground Program. Thank you both so much for being with me. Alan, I'd like to start with you. You're one of the innovators of the Strategic Underground Program. What was the impetus for its creation? Thanks, Nadia, and welcome to Dominion, by the way. Glad to know that you're part of the Strategic Underground team. You know, whenever there is a long duration restoration effort following a, a weather event, the questions about undergrounding power lines is is always renewed. We were developing the Strategic Underground Program, and, and we found this article back from 1955 in the Vepcovian magazine uh, with the title, Wouldn't It Be Nice If All Those Power Lines Were Underground? Uh, so we've been talking about undergrounding for a very, very long time. And after Hurricane Isabel impacted 1.8 million of our customers in 2003, and keep in mind, we only had 2 million customers in 2003, so 90% of our customers suffered power outages. The SEC actually commissioned a study to see what it would take to underground utilities. And their estimate came back at $80 billion, which in my opinion, probably would not come close to undergrounding all utilities. So it was just too expensive. Then in 2011, there was Hurricane Irene. And in 2012, there was a derecho event. Each one of those caused over 1 million customer outages. So at that time, a a lot of smart people got together, people like Rodney Blevins and Carl Zafglack and Les Carter, and they started looking at undergrounding from a different perspective. So instead of undergrounding everything, they started looking at a more targeted approach that could deliver true operational benefits, but at a much lower cost. And and they ultimately landed at undergrounding tap lines. And, And we have tens of thousands of tap lines equaling about 20,000 miles, or about half of our overhead distribution system. And many of these tap lines are located in backyards and in ravines, and and there's trees that surround them. And so they incur a lot of damage in storm events. But what they did find is that a significant number of the outages and the damages that that happen on those tap lines occur on about 20% of the tap line, so about 4,000 miles. Undergrounding tap lines is much cheaper than undergrounding main lines. So undergrounding 4,000 miles of tap lines can be achieved for about two to 3% of the SCC estimate. And the length of storm restoration, according to the analysis, could be reduced by, by 40 to 50%. So that is significant, a real value add for our customers, uh, balancing cost and operational impact. So the program is really about reducing the amount of work that has to be done following a storm. So with less work, crews working in less impacted areas can more quickly move to areas where heavier impacts occur. So this gets the the power on faster for everyone, not just the ones that, you know, benefit from underground lines. Everybody during a storm restoration benefits from the program. It's just a brilliant concept. It's a great program, and I'm really proud to have been just a small part of it. Truly is a value add. Thank you, Alan. Karen, what makes this program so unique? There is a lot that makes it unique. And and as Alan, I'm really proud to be a part of this program. Our program is actually the first large-scale undergrounding program in the country. And through the years, Dominion Energy has actually helped other utilities as they're looking to start their own programs and shared our learnings with them. So just being the first was, was kind of one of it. And as Ellen detailed, the really the targeted analysis, it's, it's very uh, surgical where we do the work and, and gets the, the best benefits. Other utilities, you know, might look at different ways to target, to, to select the tap lines. And we feel that our analysis drives us to the best performance. Our team really makes us unique. Uh, we have a very small team, uh, you know, Nadia, part of our, our team now here. Just a, a great group of people who are really innovative and in driving performance. And if we get an opportunity today, I'd like to share some of those, those innovations. But uh, 
um, you know, a small team that, that manages such a large program is, is very unique. And then also I'd say our adaptability with the customer, you know, this is a, a construction program, right? It's a utility program, but we do focus on the customers. You know, we are going out to, uh, you know, a customer's home. This is their property. This is their family where they live. And so we realize that it's not just a regular construction program and we need to be sensitive to the customer's concerns, adjusting the, the routes, working with them to get easements, the timing of when the work might get done to convert their house, adapting their meters. We really do work with the customers and the customers are generally very happy to see us when we come out and do their project. So it's not often that a utility shows up and customers are happy to see them, but, but with this program, it is. So that's another thing that, that really makes it unique. It is a unique program. Thank you, Karen. I'd like to stick with you and discuss the impacts the program has had on the overall reliability of Dominion service. Karen, can you touch on that? Absolutely. That was the whole driver. So it's, it's interesting, you know, there's an expression, if a tree falls in forest and no one is there to hear it, did it make a sound? Well, there's a, another similar expression that you might not have heard of. If a tree falls where there was an overhead power line, but the utility converted it to underground, would it have caused an outage and how long would it have taken to restore? Right? So it's, it's kind of hard to measure what did not happen, but we've had a lot of success doing that. Firstly, we get calls from customers when a major weather event comes through and customers who we have successfully converted and they say, we didn't go out at all. The lights didn't even blink. You know, thank you so much. You know, this type of storm before we would have been out for a couple of days. So we do get that feedback from customers, even months, years after we've converted their property. We talk to our servicemen, our local offices, where they say normally after a storm, we're always in this neighborhood and we didn't even have to go in there. So we know where the work is kind of disappearing. And then we've really looked at it from a data perspective. Alan alluded to, we're, we're a data company. We look at where there are outages after a major weather event and where there would have been outages. And we've done this analysis where we quantify and show the time that we have already taken off of a storm. So we should be able to say, you know, it would have been this much longer had we not done any of the strategic underground program. And then we can also identify if the same storm were to come through once we've finished uh, the program, the 4,000 miles once per complete, what would that same storm look like? And so we've been sharing that with the State Corporation Commission and internally and with other utilities as well to help them target their programs. Thanks, Karen. Truly is impressive. I appreciate you sharing that with us. Alan, coming back to you now, how did the Strategic Underground Program team incorporate innovation while the program was still being developed? It's really rare to have had the opportunity to start with a blank piece of paper uh, and develop processes for, for a new program. So we really did have the opportunity to do some things differently. Karen alluded earlier, you know, we knew that securing easement would, would be the key to the success of the program, which meant lots of customer interaction. You know, most people love the concept of undergrounding power lines, but when it gets down to your individual property, there's a lot more discussion that has to take place. You know, granting an easement or placing a piece of equipment on your property are personal issues, and, and we needed to be able to walk customers through that process. So folks like Allison Kaufman and the entire marketing and communications team just, just embraced the opportunity to come up with a protocol for communicating with customers, uh, postcards and letters and, and milestone-driven so that customers always knew what to expect before it happened. They really did come up with a really innovative suite of, of correspondence with a, with a unique look and feel. And then the team was honored with the Chairman's Excellence Award for an augmented reality app that literally let customers see, quote unquote, see what a transformer or a pedestal would look like on their property. So, you know, through the use of an iPad, we, we could place a transformer and the customer could walk around and really see and, and be involved in the decision of where a transformer or a pedestal would go. You know, we came up with a meter base adapter, which which avoided having to replace meter bases, which reduced costs. Really, the whole idea of utilizing vendors to do both design and construction was pretty unique for Dominion at the time. You know, a lot of other folks have now benefited from that decision as we've used more and more contract design for a lot of the other initiatives that are ongoing at Dominion. A work management tool that we called SUMS, Strategic Underground Management System, was developed and it kept track of our data and our 
customer interactions, our easements and our projects. It includes interfaces with other systems. It's actually quite a remarkable tool that was built by the team. And, and the list just kind of goes on and on. But what made it fun and rewarding actually was most of the ideas came from the team and then they pushed it to reality. It was just a fun experience. And one of the things that I really enjoy even today is hearing from new teams that are put together to work on new initiatives. And sometimes they say, let's do it the way SUP did it. And, you know, as they say, invitation is, is the sincerest form of flattery. It truly is. And just so fascinating to see the evolution of this initiative. Thank you, Alan. For the last question, I'd like to direct it to both you and Karen. Dominion is so committed to and driven by innovation, as you've just demonstrated, Alan. Can you discuss other exciting movements on the horizon that aim to create a better world for our customers and the communities we serve? Karen, I'll start with you and Alan, just jump in. Well, Nadia, I think you're going to have to have another podcast to talk about other innovative things that Dominion Energy is doing. I'll kind of highlight a few. You know, the Strategic Underground Program is a resiliency program for storms. There are other programs that we have developed uh, as well. We have a main feeder hardening program, and voltage island mitigation, and have worked on developing new standards for our overhead system to make it more resilient to damage from everyday issues as well as storms. So there's a lot we're doing related to the grid transformation plan, and that can be found on our website. And then putting more devices out on our system to get better visibility of our uh, system as distributed energy resources become more proliferant. Having the real-time information about what is going on on the system to be able to operate and manage it, uh, and then also to further adapt uh, and, and restore power. So there's a lot we're doing there. Investments for electric vehicles, uh, you know, a lot of customers might still have ish, rain, range anxiety, they call it, you know, unsure if they should get an electric vehicle. And so Dominion is working to get more charging infrastructure out there to be able to support that. We have a new program that we've been working on to help support our customers and, and beyond. And that's the uh, Rural Broadband Program. And maybe I'll let Alan mention that as well, because Alan will be very involved with, with that going forward. But that's kind of some of the highlights within the, the electric distribution area. Beyond that, there's more to Dominion. Dominion has, has committed to actually achieve net zero carbon dioxide and methane emissions from its power generation and gas infrastructure operations by 2050. So we were one of the first utilities to, to commit to that as well. So really just, just nonstop uh, things that Dominion Energy is doing our customers. Yeah, Nadia, I, I would agree. I mean, what an exciting time in the industry and at Dominion. The electric utility industry is is just going to look so different, uh, already does, than, than what it did even uh, just a couple of decades ago. And Karen did a nice job of listing some of those some of those programs, the self-optimizing grid, electrification, rural broadband. How cool is it that Dominion is going to be helping provide broadband to underserved areas in our state? We found out during the pandemic how important that was uh, to have broadband. And I'll close by circling back to the Strategic Underground team. My sense is that the Strategic Underground team is not quite done yet coming up with innovative solutions during the pandemic. They they figured out how to implement DocuSign to continue securing those easements, which, you know, as we've mentioned, are the lifeline of the program. And I think the fact that they've done such a great job of developing strong processes, that allows a seamless turnover as, as individuals have moved on to other opportunities. That sense of process and that sense of that culture of innovation lives on. So as new colleagues join that team, they bring new ideas. And so the beat just continues to go on. So I'm excited to see what that team has in store for us over the next couple of years. Thank you, Karen and Alan. It is very exciting. Do either of you have any other final points that you'd like to drive home before we close? I'd like to take the opportunity to thank you, Nadia, for, for having us on to, to share about the program. I look forward to the other podcasts with different aspects of the program. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to thank Karen Kinslow and Alan Bradshaw for their expertise and participation in this podcast. For more information on Dominion Energy's Strategic Underground Program, head to dominionenergy.com underground. Thanks for listening and be on the lookout for future episodes. I'm Nadia Singh.